Hello everyone and welcome back to Vladis Place. I'm very excited to announce new series of YouTube videos on starting beekeeping. Today we are experimenting in transferring wild colony into a hive. To assist us and guide us through the process, we have Sergio Luna, who is a owner and a founder of an AA Beekeeper. Sergio specializes in live capturing and relocating bees. He brought us a wild colony that he recently captured, and we are going to try to transplant it into an empty beehive. Please keep in mind that the only thing that we have in this box are five empty frames. We did not use the lemon grass, grass extract, nor did we use the queen scent or any other incentive that will make bees stay. So basically, we have just poured the colony into this box. One thing to take into consideration when establishing a bee colony is a place on your property. We want to have a colony that's healthy, um, somewhere where there's a lot of nectar, pollen, and trees around, which I can see there's, there's plenty of trees around here, a lot of nectar, pollen, and trans, uh, plants that bloom year-round. So bees will have sufficient you know, food available to them here in this area. So First, Sergio suggested that I relocate my box from its current position. Apparently, I'm too close to the main public road and to my neighbors. There are some restrictions, rules, and guidelines on where and how far bees need to be from public places. The first thing that came to my mind was to ask when was the best time to start the beehive. Assuming you get a, a colony of bees online, um, here in Southern California, we have plenty of sunshine, so I would say you can get a colony any time of the year. If you have um, available you know, food for the bees, which is nectar, pollen, and you have a water source, it's, you can get it year round, but uh, there's more pollen and nectar, obviously, in the spring, March, April, May. Um, so it's, you, know, you can start your colony there in the spring. Uh, in the summer, you have you know, more heat, and we, we have you know, less water out, but Either fall or spring would be the best times, to be honest, in my opinion. But in Southern California, you can get a colony. You can start a colony any time of the um, year. There's no, there's never any guarantees the colony will stay. So th that was my next question. How yeah. do we secure the colony will stay? Because you can transplant the bee into a new box, but yeah. uh, what keeps them stay? So they, they end up staying if we feed them, if they, we give them some sugar water. Um, if they find, if they locate nectar and pollen, they could end up staying. Uh, if they don't find any food sources, they'll leave. So I'm sure they'll they'll go on routes, you know, tomorrow or Saturday, or what is it, today's Wednesday. If they if they go in the box today, they'll do orientation flights to figure out where they're at. Mm -hmm. And then they'll go on routes, you know, probably tomorrow and then locate some nectar and pollen somewhere. So I have seen in a, uh, in a videos that people will um, enclose the queen and keep the queen in right. a box in an enclosure. Does that help? That helps for the, so the bees don't leave, you know, because they they can't leave without a queen. Uh, if she's if she's in a cage, they'll end up staying most likely. Uh, also, if there's brood, there's eggs for the there's bees developing in the in the comb. The bees will you know. They have better chances of staying if there's brood available okay. and if there's honey and nectar and pollen in the combs then that raises their their chance of staying so but basically we're start starting with the bees alone there is no there's no honey there are no combs there's nothing there's just nothing, the bees just bees so, so. You, we really have to work hard to convince them to stay so hopefully yeah. We get to keep the bees and hopefully they find a home around here. Yes. Next step was leveling the location where we're gonna set the beehive. I have picked the place that's far from the road and from our neighbors. So in the beehive, these frames, you can get plastic foundation. This is a, this is plastic frame, but uh, wooden frames are a lot better. As, uh, bees communicate with each other through pheromones. Uh, chemicals called pheromones and if I don't use any smoke then the bees will get angry well they get aggressive defensive and they'll 
It'll be less tendency of them to sting you if, they're, if you smoke them first. Yeah, since so smoke neutralizes their pheromones so they don't attack you. Oh, I see. So essentially they, they can't emit any attack pheromones with the smoke because it, it disguises the... I see. It, it kind of blocks their communication. Okay, yeah. okay, that's another thing I just learned. I thought they get uh, scared or something and they stop biting. Okay, so here we go. This was a very exciting moment for me. And uh, this hive, or the colony actually, looks uh, rather uh, healthy and large. So we're just gonna transfer them to a box, cover the box, and the plan is to let them settle down and see what happens next. These bees have been through quite an ordeal today, considering that they have been removed from their original hive, where they have the food and nursery, and where their queen was safe. Since then, they have not been able to feed, and further, they've been transported in a paper box to another county. I can only imagine how stressed their colony must be at this moment. This one's doing it. Yes. Uh, they're standing still and they're releasing a chemical in the air. Okay. Letting the other bees know that the queen is there. The queen is there. Okay, okay. Yeah. Very good. So, so that is their, it's a body language, it's obviously. It's a body language, yeah. It's a pheromone. I think it's called Nazanov. Okay. It's Italian or some European name. And they push the chemicals in the, the pheromone in the air and the bees will pick up the. So that's why bees are circling around the hive mm -hmm. because of that chemical. They know that the queen is inside. The, the ones in here are doing it. And so the bees that are close to the entrance will pick up that scent. Mm -hmm. But uh, all these bees, they're just doing orientation flights. They're just trying to figure out where they're at, you know. Okay, yeah. okay. So uh, this is, it's kind of scary, but uh, I'm trying <laughs> to stay relaxed as much as is possible because they are aggravated a bit because we just dump them in, a, um, in this big box. And um, for all of you who are watching us, stay tuned. Uh, I definitely don't know what I'm doing, so I'm learning together with you. And the good thing is that we have, the, if we have, we have an expert who's gonna walk us through and help us through this uh, process. I can already tell what's going to happen here. Um, I know my kids will be looking for me and this will be a place where they will find me because um, I can see myself just bringing a cup of coffee and sitting next to the beehive to hear them work and to watch them in motion. Uh, exciting time and I think we all agree that uh, this little insect deserves its attention, recognition and above all it deserves its care. So, Sergio, what are they doing right now? They're just attached to the inner cover inside. Okay. Yeah. So they're trying to reorganize themselves? Yeah, they're, trying, they're just moving in the house, you know? They're just okay. pulling out furniture. <laughs> okay, okay. Very good. Yeah. Just two days after receiving these bees, I realized I made some major mistakes right from the beginning. First is I did not have enough frames. I should have had all 10 frames in a box. And second, I did not have the food ready for the bees. So those are two major lessons for this time. They will, uh, they'll decide if they're gonna stay or leave. Okay. You know, today or tomorrow. So we will know by the next three days if they're we'll, gonna stay. We'll know, yeah. Okay. Okay. Right now they're obviously not working. They're just figuring things out. They're doing, you know, orientation flights or talking to each other through these pheromones, but um, there's some bees staying at the entrance, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and then by this evening you'll have some bees kind of wandering around, and scouting for scouting, food. and then tomorrow and Friday they'll have some scouts looking for nesting sites. Maybe they already have one here, but they don't know that sometimes. Yeah. Next three days we'll keep an eye on them, and hopefully the hive stays. Yeah. Hopefully. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. This was uh, one of the most exciting days in my life. Good, good, good. <laughs>
With that said, we left the bees to settle down and I didn't return to check on them until that afternoon. I was so sad to find out that bees decided to leave that same day. In my next video, I'm going to share with you what happened day after because I eventually found these bees and I was able to bring them back to the box. Thank you for being part of this and joining us on this journey of becoming a beekeeper. Ahead is a road of many mistakes, but I am determined to learn beekeeping and I'm very glad I have a chance to share this with you.